Hello and welcome to this fourth video in a series on making a Space Invaders style game in Scratch 3.0. In this video you'll be learning how to draw the alien sprites and then how to use cloning to make them appear on the screen. So to get started let's create a new sprite and call it alien. So in the costume editor, make sure you're working in vector mode and you've got all these group and ungroup options. And um, then uh, make sure you're zoomed out as well. Now here's our center point. You should just be able to see it. And that's what we want to draw our alien around. Now to draw the alien, it's actually really, really simple. All we're going to do is use the box tool. Um, and we're going to make sure that the outline for the box is set to transparent. That's this box with the red diagonal line. You need to choose a fill color for your alien, so whatever color you want your alien to be. I'm going to go for a sort of dark green. And to draw the, the alien, we just need to draw a box for its body. And then we draw another box for its legs. And I can just go, um, if I use my arrow to select, I can just do copy and paste that leg. So I can get another one, the exact same size. And I'm just going to draw some eyes by using a black filled in uh, box which again I'm going to select copy paste and I get another eye okay and that's all I have to do to draw my alien um, I do want to use this arrow tool again click drag a box around my alien to select everything uh, then I'm going to click group so that I can pick any part and drag it and they all move together and I want to make sure I've got this alien as central to the middle of my editor as I can so I'm just going to take a bit of time just to make sure I've set it in the right place. Now, once you've created your alien, it's obviously going to be absolutely enormous. So you're going to want to resize it. So go down to the size for the sprite control and try a size like 40. Um, maybe in my case, I might want to make it a bit smaller. 20 is probably a bit smaller. Maybe 30 is a good middle ground. You want to get them about the right size that you could have 10 of them across the screen um, so again, I might need to make mine a little bit smaller still, maybe 28. Okay, so that's all you have to do to draw your alien, that's it. Now, we need to add some code to make this alien appear on the screen. So let's go to the code editor. Now, if you've worked through my series on making a Pac-Man game, you'll know just how hard it can be to perfectly place lots of sprites on the screen. I'm thinking of adding all the dots. Uh, now, we're going to want at least 30 aliens on the screen, and the last thing we want to do is have to position them by hand when we have a computer that we can make do this for us. So to make our aliens appear in a grid across the screen, we're going to write an algorithm to lay out a row of 10 aliens at a time, and then we can just call that algorithm repeatedly for as many rows of aliens as we want. Now this is going to involve some of the most complex programming we've done so far, so just watch carefully, make sure you follow the steps one at a time. Now before we actually start to code this algorithm, it can be helpful just to think through what the steps are that we're going to want to use. So here's a simple version of the algorithm uh, written in a sort of language, we call it pseudocode. And it starts like this. We're going to have a procedure that draws a row of aliens. And uh, we're going to need to set a variable to, of aliens in the current row to zero at the start. And then we're going to repeat the following. We're going to draw an alien. And its position is going to be at the start of the row. So um, wherever the start of the row is, we want to draw an alien there. Plus the width of an alien times the number of aliens already drawn. So if we haven't drawn any aliens, this figure will be zero. So we just draw an alien at the start of the row. But if we had drawn one or two aliens already, then the the next alien that we draw will be pushed ever so slightly further along the row as appropriate. Uh, then when we've drawn an alien, we need to increase the number of aliens in the current row by one, that variable. So now we've tracked that we're on to alien two, alien three, alien four. And those steps will continue until the aliens in current row variable reaches 10, by which point we will have um, drawn 10 aliens on the screen. And that is the end of the algorithm that we're going to be trying to make. So let's go back to the code editor and work on this. OK, now we're going to begin by dragging in a when I receive start level block. So that's events and when I receive and change that to start level. Now, the first thing we're going to do is actually take our alien sprite and we want to make sure we sort of move it out of the way for reasons that will hopefully become clear later. So I'm going to add a motion 
and go to block. And I'm just going to set this to be um, x is 0 and y 200. And that's going to just mean that this particular alien just goes out of the way um, when my game begins. I'm also going to want it uh, hidden as well. So I'm going to go looks and hide. Now, you might wonder, why on earth am I doing that? I've made an alien and I'm getting rid of it. The thing is, that one alien, that sort of base alien, I don't really want that hanging around. I only want my clones that I'm about to produce to be visible on the screen. So I just need to get rid of this base one. So once we've set this alien to get out of the way, we now want to create a, a variable that's going to keep track of how many aliens we've created. So let's uh, create a variable that's called alien count. So I'm going to make a variable and I'm going to call it aliens count. Now, it might be helpful to me later in my game for this to be available to all sprites because this is going to be how I know if I've got no aliens left, if I've shot them all. So I'm going to make this one available for all sprites. Click OK. And I'm going to grab the um, set aliens count block and just drop that in to here with start level and make sure that's set to zero when the level begins. Next, we're going to need another variable to keep track of how many rows of aliens have been drawn. So we're going to create another variable. This one's going to be called alien row. And this is only for this sprite. Only this sprite needs to know about it. So press uh, for this sprite only, press OK. And uh, we're going to set that variable to an initial value of one, because when we first draw a row of aliens, that's going to be row one. And next, we need to create a custom block that's going to contain the code for drawing a row of aliens. So under my blocks, we're going to make a block, and we're going to call it draw row of aliens. Now we don't need to use any of these extra features, so we're just going to press OK. And that gives us a new hat, define draw row of aliens, that we're going to add our code to, which is going to then actually have all the blocks we need to draw a row of aliens. So the first thing that we need to do within this um, new define block is we need to determine where the first alien in the row should be positioned. And for this, we're going to create two new variables. We're going to create alien start x and alien start y. And these are going to be for this sprite only. And we need to give them some initial values. So we're going to grab the set block, add it to our defined draw row of aliens. And let's change alien start x. And I'm going to set that to minus 220. And I'm going to do the same for alien start y. But this time I'm going to set it to plus 160. Now that's just saying that the very first alien in my row is going to start at x minus 220 which is going to be sort of about here and this is saying that the y position for that alien should be 160 which again is about here. Um, it might be that when we, when we draw the aliens these figures aren't quite right and we need to change them but they'll do as a starting point. Next we need to add another variable called aliens in current row and this is going to keep track of how many aliens we've drawn so far so again this is for this sprite only and when we start this function we won't have drawn any so aliens in current row is currently zero next i want to add a block of code that's going to repeatedly create clones of my aliens until i have produced 10 of them so i'm going to get control and I'm going to do repeat until aliens in current row is equal to, so I need an equals operator. Go back to variables, grab aliens in current row. So repeat until aliens in current row equals 10. And what do I want to keep happening until we have 10 of them? I want to create a clone of myself. So that's going to create a clone of an, a of an alien. And I'm going to change the value of aliens in current row by 1. So variables change aliens in current row by 1. So as this runs through, it's going to create a clone. That's going to go up by 1, and it's going to repeat. And eventually, aliens in current row is going to be equal to 10, in which case this repeat 
will uh, stop running and we won't create any more clones. Now at this stage we've got a lot of variables hanging around so let's just get rid of some of these. Uh, so let's untick the ones we don't want. So I don't need to see the aliens in current row, nor the row I'm on, nor the X, nor the Y values. I do want to see aliens count, but I don't want it to look like this. Instead, I want it to be a number up here. So let's right click on it, go to large readout. And let's place it over here on my info bar where I've got my aliens counter. So we've created a routine for creating alien clones. And if I click on this, it, it doesn't really do anything. And the reason it's not doing anything is I haven't written any code yet to say, well, what should happen when I create a clone of myself? So let's do that. Let's go to control and when I start as a clone. So when I start as a clone, what do I want to do? Well, basically, I want to appear in the right place. So to do that, we're going to need to set the X and Y positions of the clone. So let's go to motion and get a um, set X2 and set Y2. We're also going to want to make sure that our clone is visible. So we're going to need to go to looks and choose show. And actually, we're going to also want to increase the number of aliens that we've got in our counter. So if we go to variables, we can get change and we're going to change the aliens count by one because we've created another alien. So that number there should increase. Now at the moment, if I do this, every single alien is going to appear in the same location, but we want them to appear in different locations. So we need to add a little bit of maths into these blocks so that we can position them based on their starting positions plus how many aliens have been produced so far. Okay, so for this to work, we're going to need to grab some operators. So let's get um, a plus operator, drop it into set X, and we're also gonna need a multiply operator, and I'm gonna put that in the second hole of the plus operator. So now I've got something plus something times something. And the thing that's going to go in here is going to be my alien start X. So my aliens X position starts with the starting position. Makes sense. And then I'm going to put in here how many row aliens have I currently got in my uh, row, uh, which will start off as being none. I won't have any. Uh, so aliens in current row goes in there. Oops, that should have gone in the multiply and drop that in. So this is going to say, well, my first one, there's no alien, uh, so that will be zero. So whatever goes in here doesn't really matter. And it's just going to place the first alien at alien start X, which makes sense. That's where the first alien should be. Uh, but every one after that, um, alien two, alien three, alien four, is going to want to be relative to that start location, but plus however many there are. And for each alien, I need to leave a certain amount of space. And I'm going to leave 40 pixels for each alien to start with. And again, that might prove to be incorrect, but we can try it later. Now for the Y, I need to do a similar thing. Um, so I'm going to grab uh, my operators, but this time I'm going to need a minus operator because I'm going to be sort of working downwards down my Y axis. Uh, but I still need a multiplier in this second half. And my values that go in here Alien start Y. So my Y position begins with the starting Y position for the aliens, minus from that, so pulling down um, the row that I'm on. So alien row, put that in there, alien row multiplied by again 40. So if I'm on the first row, I'm going to pull down 40 pixels from there. If I'm on my second row, I'm going to pull down. 80 pixels from my third row, I'm going to pull down 120 pixels from that starting value. And then I'm going to draw my aliens from there. So we can give this a bit of a go and see if it works by just tapping on or clicking once on define draw row of aliens. It should set all these values and it should produce 10 clones all in the same row. Okay, and it's sort of positioned them quite high up, and that's probably because alien row hasn't been set to one because I haven't 
uh, actually done that yet. So let me click on that hat and let me define them again. There we go, there we go. Another row in roughly the right place. It's a little bit of a mess at the moment. Um, so let's click stop to clear everything. Let's press green flag and let's uh, draw that again. Okay, that's not bad, but it looks like maybe they need a little bit more space between them. So perhaps my aliens are just a little bit too big. So instead of them being size 28, maybe I'll try size 24. Let's stop, start again, click on that. That's a bit better. That's given me a bit more room between them. And look, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I've got room on the right-hand side for my aliens to move which is crucial because that's kind of how the game works. They move left and right and they work down the screen. So there we go. We've written a routine that can draw 10 cloned aliens in a row without having to painstakingly position each and every one. All we need now is to call this routine multiple times when we start the level to position uh, one row and then another row and then another row. So let's just press stop and let's add that code. So. When I start a level, I want to draw my rows of aliens. To do that, I'm just going to use a repeat block and I'm going to repeat three times. Go to my blocks, I'm going to draw a row of aliens and so that they appear on different rows, I just need to change the value of alien row by one each time that runs. So let's now press the green flag and see what happens. And there you go, that has created three rows of aliens. There's not quite enough space between each one, so let me change when I start this clone, set Y to alien start Y. Maybe I'll change this value to 50 and see what looks what that looks like. And that's given me a bit more room between each alien. As you can see, possibly on my game, maybe they're still a bit big. And that's the sort of tweaking that you can do as you go testing. Okay, and it's up to you as you play your game to keep testing it regularly to make sure that your values are looking good. But if you think your aliens are too big, just change their size. If there's too much of a space between them um, horizontally, you need to change this multiplier on when you set your X. And if you think there's too much space or too little space vertically, you need to change this multiplier where you set your Y. So we've got our rows of aliens appearing. It has set the aliens counter correctly and it all happens automatically when we start our game. So that's almost finished. The last thing we need to do is just add some code to make our alien sprites disappear when we reach the end of the level um, or when it's game over or for any reason when we want to hide all the game elements. So to do that, just like I've done with my other sprites, I'm going to go to um, events when I receive hide game elements, in fact I might put it over here, keep it organized. When I receive hide game elements, these are the things I want to do. I want to um, hide this variable, I want to hide these uh, clones, and I want to stop all the sprites uh, scripts. So let's do that. Let's go to variables. I'm going to hide variable alien count which also means I actually need to show variable alien count when I start the level. Really important I do that. Then I want to hide the alien itself. Okay. And then I want to stop all the other sprites working. So if I go to control and I go to stop and rather than stop all, I want to stop other sprites, uh, scripts in this sprite. And then I just want to delete this clone, free it up from memory. Okay. And that's it for this video. You have now designed uh, your alien. You've written code that makes multiple alien clones appear with pixel perfect positioning on the screen. And you haven't had to duplicate any sprites or painstakingly position anything manually. Um, we've obviously still got our spaceship and we can shoot. <coughs> But currently, nothing happens when we shoot the aliens, and the aliens don't move on the screen. So those are the next videos we're going to do. We're going to start with making the aliens move, and then we're going to move on to actually how do we do the shooting in the next video.